EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut. It's a home of a Vans RV12 build. It's another build night here at the RV12 construction hangar. Here with project lead Rick Montero. And Rick, we've got some progress since the last video. And uh, coming up on a big milestone, starting to think about installing the engine on this little airplane. Some, some fairing work that we're sort of halfway in between. Uh, got a fuel tank installed and some other stuff. So let's walk around the RV12 and catch up on the progress. Okay. Okay, so the last time we met, um, we were talking about tires, wheels, and brakes. And I think we left off at, uh, we were getting ready to uh, fill all the hydraulic lines or the brake lines with hydraulic fluid. So we've done that since, and we can come over and uh, take a look. So on this side, we've actually started installing the uh, wheel fairing, but we've got the uh, brake line coming down this, the back side of the, uh, the, the uh, gear leg and it coils around uh, underneath and wraps around and then goes back into the um, the brake caliper at the bottom of the brake caliper there is a bleeder valve and so what we used was um, a bleeder valve tank um, you know pump essentially that you place all the hydraulic fluid in, into the tank you pump it up and you connect it to the uh, bleeder valve and then you backfill all the hydraulic fluid into the, uh, um, the brake lines. And <clears throat> you have to do each side separately because they're independent braking systems. We used a uh, product called Radco 257. It's a uh, mill standard, um, I think it's 87257 compliant hydraulic fluid. It's uh, you know, uh, flame resistant. Or fire resistant I should say and um, uh, so that's what we went with we had a, another member that's in a build and he had some extra fluid so he he allowed us to use it um, one of the things that we learned as we were uh, back filling was that to get all of the air out of the lines you really needed to pump the uh, tank up the reservoir to above 15 psi when we were initially filling the lines, uh, we were just pumping slowly and we weren't really going much over 10 psi. And we noticed that uh, the uh, air bubbles in the lines were not clearing. So did a little research, found out that you, if you pump up a little higher above, you know, between 15 and 20 psi, that really gets the flow and it pushes all the air out. And we were successful in filling the lines and uh, doing that. So that's the uh, the brake lines, we got them filled, so um, the lines are all connected to the brake calipers and that's working great. The other thing that we accomplished was we installed the fuel tank. Um, and in doing that, um, we also needed to, um, you know, create, fabricate um, the overflow lines. And maybe if we go around to the other side, we can take a look at that. So in the construction drawings, the, um, you know, the Vans kit provides you with all the aluminum tubing you need, but uh, the construction drawings also tell you exactly how you're supposed to bend these lines, what the size is, and um, so that you get a good fit. So it needs, the overflow has to connect to this overflow uh, port on the tank, it goes back through the bulkhead, and then on the back side of the bulkhead, there's another line that um, makes a couple of uh, 90 degree turns and then it goes straight down um, to the bottom of the fuselage and it comes out here through the drain port. Um, you also have to connect up a uh, uh, anti-siphon connection in that uh, overflow and that's basically just a flexible um, plastic tubing that connects through a T and you run that down and you connect that to a rivet that's on the underside here, just behind the uh, drain uh, port. Um, and you just connect the uh, plastic tubing to that. The other uh, part of the fuel tank installation we, we've accomplished is actually installing the, the uh, fill tube. So uh, essentially you have this uh, pipe that connects the tank to the fill port, and there's a cap. Um, 
to install that, we had to, uh, there's a flange that's around the top of this uh, fill tube, and you have to sort of bend that to shape so that it takes the shape of this turtle skin um, on the fuselage. And then you have to uh, apply a bunch of uh, fuel tank sealant to get a good seal um, between the, uh, you know, the, the flange on that uh, fill valve or fill pipe to the uh, fuselage skin. And we found that um, when we were putting that in, once we had the uh, fuel tank sealant on it, we just used some saran wrap to wrap around it because you don't actually want it to bond to this. You just want it to create a seal, so you're like creating a gasket, essentially. And the saran wrap works really well as a uh, separation barrier for that fuel tank sealant. The other thing we've done is on the bottom side of the fuel tank, there's a couple of uh, um, lines, fuel lines that you have to connect, and we've done that as well. So there's the uh, main feed line, and uh, then there's the return line um, as well. And um, we've also installed this um, spacer plate. So this spacer plate actually came with the uh, service bulletin kit that we purchased for the reinforcement of the landing gear beam. They give you this, this spacer plate that you need to install between the fuel tank and the landing gear beam because of all the additional rivets that are installed in there. So that's, uh, that's been accomplished. Uh, we've started, as you noticed on the, the other side of the aircraft, we've started installing the uh, fiberglass fairings. So we put in the uh, fairings for the uh, vertical st stabilizer and the rudder. Um, so we've accomplished that about a week ago. Um, it's basically, there's a bit of sanding and, and trimming that you have to do on the, the portion that fits down inside of the, uh, the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. And there's match drilling that you have to do, uh, deburring of course after that, and then the final riveting to to attach them. And um, as you saw on the other side, what we've been working on most recently are the wheel uh, pants or the fairings for the wheels. Part of the fabrication process, um, they come in two pieces. You have to um, essentially um, trim the forward half so that you get a good fit with the, uh, the uh, rear half. So there's some trimming along the edges here. There's also trimming on this piece that has to be done. And then there's uh, installation of the, uh, the mounting brackets that mount to the actual axle, wheel axle. Um, so we have to do some, first some match drilling uh, for the screws that hold the brackets in place. And then uh, the instructions tell you that you have to um, then sort of create a, a recess using epoxy. So you mix up some epoxy, uh, put in some filler to you know, get a, a thick consistency, and you, we tape up the brackets so that the uh, epoxy won't glue to it. Use a lot of wax on the, um, uh, on the nut plates and the screws, and then you install it and um, build up the epoxy around it so that you have a recess that the parts fit into now. And so you do that on the forward and aft area where the screws attach to the brackets. And uh, so what we're doing next is uh, actually doing the fitting on the aircraft uh, around the, um, the wheel and the gear leg. So there's a notch that you have to, um, to get it to actually fit on the aircraft, there's a notch that you have to uh, cut into the side of the fairing um, on both the forward and aft and the uh, instructions give you the dimensions for the location and uh, what we found is you that's a good starting point but uh, generally you'll have to do a little adjustment once you get it on the aircraft to get a good fit so that's what we're going to be working on for the probably the next week, get these done. And uh, then after that, we're going to move on to uh, getting the engine brought over and start installation of the engine. And I think in parallel to that, we'll start working on the canopy installation as well. 
So uh, I think that's uh, probably it for the latest update on our RV12 build.